Hello and welcome back to another Oasis Top Tips. Did you know that Oasis Primer has a clipboard tool that helps you save selections and copy data between models and include files? Today I'm going to show you the clipboard tool which is built into Oasis Primer. You can access this by clicking on Tools and then Clipboard in the menu at the top. A pop-up window will appear. The clipboard is essentially a way of storing entities and selections in your model for use later on. For example, you could add airbags, beams, contacts, control cards, anything you like, and then perform operations on them. There are several ways of adding things to your clipboard. At the moment, there's nothing in my clipboard. You can tell this because the empty clipboard button is greyed out and the subtract button is also greyed out. To add stuff to my clipboard, I'm first going to select Add. Here, the Select Entities window that you'll be familiar with if you've used Primer before will appear. Then I'm going to click on Entities and this will allow me to select Entities from the display. I need to make sure I click Add Items to actually add these to my clipboard. Any items I've added to my clipboard will appear with a little parenthesis showing how many of them there are. In this case, I have five beams, but no airbags and no constraint. I can also add specific contents from this list by clicking on the drop down arrow at the end. For example, I might want to add all the materials in my model, in which case I click the drop down and add all. This will add all 34. I can simplify this view by clicking show in clipboard, which only shows those things which are currently in my clipboard. There are a couple of other ways to add stuff to your clipboard too. For example, you can add stuff to your clipboard using the Quick Pick menu. By default, this is set to blank, but you can select Add to Clipboard or Remove or Replace from the drop down menu. I'll select Add, and here it's going to select some parts to add. So I'll just click on them. And note that the view doesn't update immediately, but you need to press Refresh and it will show. So here I've added those four parts. I could then sketch them just to see what I've selected. And of course, I could remove them or um, locate them if they're in different includes. There's another way of adding stuff to your clipboard too, but I'll show you this later on. Once I have stuff on my clipboard, I can do various things with them. For example, I could delete the things that I've selected. Clicking on that will open up a delete menu, which will give me more fine-grained control over what it is I actually keep and delete. Just performing a few checks and then here we see the options. In this case I would just leave everything because I don't want to delete it so I'll just abort that process. I can of course sketch the contents and this shows everything visible on my clipboard. List the contents and you might want to write this out to a file for use later on. I can renumber anything in my clipboard and this is really useful if you have specific parts you want to renumber maybe the nodes or something for. So you would click on the nodes and then apply. If you wanted to undo that process you'd have to go to your undo stack at the top and then click on the undo there. You can also create submodels from any of your selections. The save as model option allows you to do such a thing. By default, it has the clipboard contents highlighted and this will only take the things that are in your clipboard and nothing else. You need to be careful when using this because it could end up with errors if there are um, latent references in your model. So for example, I'll just do this. Clipboard contents and then I'll click apply and we'll have a look. So here we see that there was some error with some of the nodes not defined properly. And that's the sort of thing that can happen when you perform the operation. So I'll blank that and go back to model one. And then I'll try that again. And note that my clipboard board is saved. So I can do the same operation, but now clicking on one of the other options. And I'll just explain these quickly now. So nodes and elements only essentially takes just the nodes and the elements that you selected, nothing extra, nothing like sets or materials or sections or whatever. 
um, but it also takes the nodes and elements from parts you've selected, so it propagates them. Find reference takes everything that is referenced and it goes down the reference tree. Um, so if you use xrefs, then you need to you can see what um, things are referenced by, and it uses a similar principle. However, for things that are at the bottom of the reference tree, for example nodes, it wouldn't propagate. So if the only thing I selected was some nodes, then the only thing that would be transferred would be nodes. And the reason for that is because nodes themselves are referenced by other things, but they don't reference anything themselves. And then lastly, there's this option for creating sub models from parts. And that's basically as the name suggests, if I have some parts selected, I then can create a sub model from them. So in this case, I'm just going to select find reference items and then apply. I'll firstly change the name just so it's clear what I'm doing. Find reference items, apply, and this will open in the next free model. But before it does so, it gives me some finer control over what it is that gets carried across. So you can see some parts and sections and things are taken across. The things in this column are the things that were in my clipboard, and the things in the second column are those that are found during the reference, find reference process. So I'm just going to take them all across, apply, and then I'll dismiss this and I'll blank and just see what came across with that operation. So here we have some stuff selected. It looks a bit strange because some of the entities I selected in that part were there, but um, not that whole part. But one important thing to note is that when I create a model this way, it doesn't carry across control cards or database cards. So you see if I look at the control cards, they're empty here. But that's not a problem. I can use Clipboard to help me with this too. Now, at this point, I'm going to explain that um, the Clipboard is actually linked to each model. So at the moment, Model 3 is visible. And so my Clipboard for Model 3 is showing. But there's nothing in this Clipboard. I can confirm this by going down the list as well and showing. That's because the Clipboard is specific to a model. I can change the Clipboard by clicking on Select Model by clicking on select model and then selecting a different model clipboard. In this case, I'm just going to select model one. Now model one isn't visible at the moment, but that's not a problem, but for simplicity, I will make it visible. And then I need to make sure I'm in show model option and I want to add the database and um, control cards. So firstly, I want to empty my clipboard because I've already got this stuff in my new model. So I'll empty it. Am I sure I want to empty it? Yes. And then I would like to add the control cards. So the quick way of doing this is by just clicking on the arrow, drop down arrow and then going to add all. I can do this as well with my database ASCII and database binary cards. Once I've got them there, I can now use the merge into model option. So clicking on that, I know that it's model two, model three that I'm going to merge into. So it doesn't really matter which option I use here because find reference won't find anything else. And you can see that's all grayed out here because the control and database cards aren't referenced to anything else. Clicking apply will then give me the option from merge models. And if you ever try to use the model merge tool, this is exactly the same thing. Of course, there's no clashes because there's no control cards or anything there present. I can tweak what I'm doing here so I can choose the target model. And this is going to create a new one with a new name. Or, of course, I could overwrite the existing model, but I'll just leave the defaults and apply that merge. Now model four is opened. And just to show you that it's got those control cards in it, I'm going to go to the part tree and just click on contents and then show you model four. And now we can see that it's got the control cards as well as the database cards. And just to prove that they weren't there in model three, you can see that here as well. So that was really useful. And it's essentially a way of copying and pasting from one model to another. So supposing you had a model with a certain 
um, setup of control cards or um, other settings. You could read that in, copy those into the clipboard and then merge them into the model that you want them to be pasted into. Lastly, there are a couple more useful tools here. So um, you could write out your clipboard selection to a keyword file. Um, you can move it to an include. Um, so that's a way of organizing your model. You can move it to an assembly or save as a group, um, which can be really useful if you have certain um, selections that you always want to be using. Um, and then you can also use the find reference items. And this is a way of um, essentially updating your clipboard so that any, any of the references are um, found. So for example, if I empty my clipboard again, and then I, this way time I'm going to um, add a part using the quick pick options, and then just showing clipboard refresh, there's the one part there. When I find reference items, it then finds all of the curves, materials, nodes, etc. that were there. And then the last option is submodel from visible. And so I can just change this now to blanking and select some parts and um, whatever it is I want. Um, I'm just going to hide all the models except for model one and right click and only here. So um, this is my selection here. And if I go submodel from visible, it will create a model with all of these visible um, parts and entities in that model. Um, and what it does is it essentially performs a cleanup operation um, on those things that are blanked. Um, I can also preserve the includes. Uh, and if I do that, and then submodel from visible, once it's completed, I can look at the include tree and show you that the includes have been preserved for this new model. So now that that's completed, I can see that model five just has um, those visible components in it. And if I go to the include tree, I can see that there is all of the includes preserved, which is really useful. The final really useful use case I'm going to show you of the clipboard becomes apparent whenever you're making a model selection. To do this, I'm just going to show you this with the orient tool. So here is a um, option selection window, and I'm just going to select um, some nodes to move. So I've selected some nodes. And then whenever I've made a selection, I can select on the options button here, and I can actually add that straight to my clipboard. If I went back to my clipboard, I can now see that those nodes are present. This works for any selection. But this becomes even more powerful when I come back to my options list and I can see that my clipboard selection is visible here. So for example, supposing I clicked none and cleared my selection of nodes, I could then come back to that selection of nodes by clicking on the clipboard option here without having to reproduce the selection. This can be so powerful when you're working with um, complex models and you need to keep track of different selections and is one of the most useful use cases I find of the clipboard. So I hope you found that really useful looking at the clipboard tool within Oasis Primer and how you can use that to create submodels as well as keep track of selections for each model you have open. And I look forward to seeing you next time in Oasis Top Tips.